Hello and welcome everyone to our second episode of object oriented ABAP. So in the previous session we saw the introduction part, what are the classes and all those things. Now we will see some important features, important features or properties of object oriented ABAP. So let's discuss them in detail then we will move on to implementation part right so first property is encapsulation first property is encapsulation 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 so what is encapsulation encapsulation is encapsulation is wrapping or grouping of data or you can say them attributes also and functions mainly we call them methods here not functions so it is encapsulation is wrapping or grouping of attributes or methods into a single class why we are wrapping it why we are wrapping the data and function within a single class or single unit so that it is done to prevent our data from being misused from being misused so so that anybody cannot directly get the access of our um, local data or our crucial data right so instead of that we will wrap our data and function within the class so that if anybody is using he or she will not have the direct access of our data now what encapsulation does encapsulation restricts restricts the visibility of the components of the class it restricts the visibility of the components of the class what is this visibility visibility means uh, who will have the access of these methods or objects so uh, visibility okay let's discuss that part visibility so in UABAP or object oriented ABAP there are three levels of levels of visibility there are three levels of visibility first one is private so private is there what private is doing so if the visibility is private only the class in which uh, the components have been defined components means have been defined will have the access access or you can simply say this that components will only be visible only be visible into the class in which they have been defined if we are defining any uh, component it will be only visible into the class in which it has been defined okay perfect now we will go for the second visibility which is protected this visibility protected so component will be visible to the class components will be visible to the class where they are where they have been defined right and they will also be visible to the child class or inherited class or you can say 
subclass all of them are same thing the meaning is same that is we are the child classes of our parents right so if some property for example let's say my parent have bought a, a piece of land so that property i can access so that property is protected right then the third one is public section public section so components of our class components of our class with this visibility can be accessed anywhere anywhere even anywhere outside the class also so the best example will be uh, you see when uh, if we you are living in a society there is a public park so that park is accessible uh, so for example the public parks in a society is accessible to everyone right so that is a public property okay so this is encapsulation so using encapsulation we can uh, uh, restrict the visibility of the attributes or components or methods that we have defined inside our class okay then second is inheritance so inheritance inheritance let's discuss this part so what is inheritance inheritance is used to inherit the features and properties of parent class to the child class that is we have inherited the properties of our mother and father so we have inherited the properties of our parent class right so we are the child class of our parents <coughs> so what you see here is the class that is inherited inherited is called the the class that is inherited is called the parent class or base class or super class you can call them anything and the class which is inheriting inheriting the parent class is called the child class or derived class or subclass so the class that is inheriting the parent class or base class or super class uh, and the class which is inheriting is inheriting the parent class is called the child class derived class or subclass so what is the feature benefit so the main advantage of this feature is reusability of the properties defined in one class defined in one class can be reused can be reused so reusability is the most important thing and also it increases uh, the fast implementation so fast implementation it also increases the fast implementation right this is our inheritance acquiring or inheriting the features of our parent to child so the best example is whatever the property our parent have bought we will have the access of that right we will inherit the, all those properties then we'll move on to the next property which is polymorphism so polymorphism now here polymorphism is made up of two words polymorphism is made up of two words and what are these words 
poly which means many and the second one is morphism which means forms so you can say the polymorphism is polymorphism means many forms many forms that is a method which is defined in parent class can behave differently in the child class whatever method that we have defined in the parent class can behave differently in the child class so what does it means so polymorphism is a concept polymor morphism is a concept which allows us which allows us to overwrite some functionality to override some functionality that is method of one class can behave differently can behave differently in the child class so how we will understand this particular concept so the best example is for example i will take a simple example so for example let's say so for example let's say i defined one method in parent class to calculate the area of the given figure okay i defined it a method so now what is this how this method is behaving let's say in parent class in parent class we are calculating the area of rectangle rectangle and in child class we are calculating this is just a hypothetical situation calculating the area of a square so what does it simply means our method which is behaving differently in parent class it is also behaving differently in child class also so for this method we can take input uh, let's say two sides the length of the sides as input and based on that we can calculate the areas right we can calculate the area of rectangle rectangle will be uh, l into b right it will be l into b length into breadth and our square will become side into side right the area will become side into side so the same method which we defined in parent class is behaving differently in child class so this is polymorphism ability to behave differently in the child class also now how this uh, polymorphism is implemented so in u or object oriented abap object oriented abap polymorphism is achieved by using one concept one concept which is interface we will see this interface part in the upcoming session right now it is we will not be able to understand it but for now only for knowledge purpose in uabap polymorphism is achieved by using one concept which is interface <coughs> okay so this is all about some most important features of our properties of our object oriented abap okay so thank you very much for watching this video we will continue from next part